and then the next step of it is to do the back I usually find it's best to do the edges and the back first because if the front face is the last face that you do you end up with a much more even finish and it might also be worth mentioning that another advantage of watering down the die is that you get a more mottled more rustic die spread and the die goes further so it's better valued win-win Right, so as I said would happen, more water soaked out of that. So I'll just dry that off. Because standing water on the surface usually gives you an even finish. But then again, I am trying to get an uneven finish, so I'm not going to worry too much. Well, I think I'm quite happy with that. That has got the uneven look that I wanted, but there isn't too many visible brush strokes. So I'll leave that to soak in and then I'll have to do the wet forming stage. All right. So that's mostly soaked in, so there's no actual dye on the surface of the leather, but it's still nice and wet. So now I'm going to do the wet forming. What I did was I put arrows on there which point in the direction the belt needs to go so I don't put these in the wrong way round. And literally all I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch the tab because leather's stretchy when it's wet for those of you who don't know already. And then I'm going to feed that inside and then I'm going to make sure that the bottom of it is still flat. And then when that dries, it'll keep its shape and the belt will thread through nicely, hopefully. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. The only other thing that I'm going to do additionally before it dries is I'm just going to turn up the edges of these a little bit. The reason for that is because it will make it sit a little bit smoother when I'm wearing it and it will also make it look a little bit more worn out. Okay, so now all I've got to do is wait for it to dry. That'll probably take anywhere between one and two days. So my next video will, won't be filmed today. All right, so it's been a couple of days, two days I think, and I'm back. It's nice and dry, and as you can see, it's gone very stiff and it's kept the shape on the edges and the shape of where the wood was. So I'll just take those out and the next step of this is to rub it over with a tissue. Now most people choose to use a leatherwork brush to do this and 
honestly I just never bothered to buy one because tissues work when the dye dries it goes matted and then to bring out the shine of the leather you have to rub off the excess dye so if I do that you'll see that the dye is rubbing off on the tissue so I will do that Okay, so now that's done, you should start to see a bit of the shine that you'd normally expect from leather. Now the final finishing touch of this is to treat it with something. Now you can use whatever leatherwork finish you want to use. The best ones I usually find are anything wax based like dubbing or what I'm using today which is called mink oil or there are various different treatments that you can buy for shoes and stuff but I'm going to be using mink oil anyway it works it waterproofs it now because it's completely raw on the back I usually do the back as well and that does make it a little bit messy until it wears off but it wears off and it helps it be waterproof so it doesn't get saturated as easily because if this gets fully saturated with water then it will lose the shape that I've wet formed into it and usually when I do this, I end up doing maybe two coats and it will darken it a bit. So after I've done this, it will look darker. Yeah, so that will be more like the finished color. But the other thing, the main reason I like mink oil is because it's got a lot of oil in it whereas dubbing has got a lot more wax in it it actually helps soften the leather as well All right, so I'm back to the camera. It's been a few days. I'll admit I've done probably about three coats of the mink oil since I started filming. I just didn't think it was a very interesting thing to be filming. So I'm back here and this is literally the last piece of the task. So because mink oil is based with wax, it goes a bit sticky so you usually end up having to buff it and then you get some shine on the leather so all I've got is just a, a random rag and I'm just going to rub it down so that it goes more shiny and less sticky it does usually stay a little bit tacky but that doesn't really matter because that's nice and waterproof so that's what we want All right, so that's now done. That's um, got a reasonable shine to it, but nothing too noticeable. The one thing that I will mention is that looks a lot more red on the camera because I've started editing some of the earlier video now and it definitely looks a lot more red on the camera than it actually is in real life. I don't know, color balance is a bit wrong on that camera, so I'll I'll take some proper photographs with a better camera and then I'll upload them as part of the video so you can see what it actually looks like. So now I've got the piece of the belt that I made before and the final finishing thing to do is to thread it through the holes and what you will notice is the edges on this are completely unsealed but 
I wasn't going to bother to do that because I want it to look kind of rustic and a bit worn out and also because the leather strap is ready dyed it's that quick to make that it, if it wears out I can just replace that and keep the metal work. Now these slots are deliberately tight so that it can't easily come undone accidentally. But it's still uh, it's still relatively easy to undo so if I need to pull it out to thread belt pouches and stuff onto it then it's not going to be that much of a problem. Right, it's finally finished and mostly successful. Now, you'll notice I've got a mattock on it now. And I'll put a picture of how I've managed to do that. But what I'm hoping I can do with the backing piece is punch holes around the edge and use this same method to lace other useful things onto it for mining and possibly for adventuring. So with any luck, it will become a more useful utility thing. Although, I did make some mistakes with measuring and working out the lengths of the leather and the main problem with that is what I've ended up with. The buckle on the inside of the backing piece when I had intended it to be on the outside of it and the, the tail of the belt doesn't reach the loop on the back piece so I had to make a keeper. However, there is one possible advantage to having the belt keeper sewn onto the belt and that is, if for any reason I decide that instead of searching for gold down the line, I want to go on an adventure, well, all I have to do is unthread the belt from the back piece. But, if I was relying on the back piece to be the keeper, I would have to spend ages unlacing all of the unwanted mining stuff from the back piece. And honestly, when I discovered this possible design feature, I was quite pleased with it, even though it was a pure accident. And I think that's about it for this video, except I want to say one more thing, if you can hear me over the British weather. And that is, thank you very much to anybody who has followed this project through, and I hope it's been of use to you. And also a very special thank you to any of the new subscribers who have joined the channel recently. So, I'll see you in the next video. And for now, since I'm in the woods, I think I've got some adventuring to do.